Hello, everyone. Welcome to the No Good Podcast, where we are joined by uh, one of my favorite artist duos from from oh, Canada. Man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. It's Naughty Nose Res Kids. If you guys don't know them, let me break it down for you. They are a Canadian hip hop duo of indigenous descent from BC. The duo was comprised of young tribes and young D formed in 2016 snotty nose reds kids released their first self-titled album in january 2017 following up the same year with their second full-length album we like to give people their flowers here on this podcast gentlemen so i'm gonna i'm gonna list that resume for you guys all right the (laughs) the average savage in september 2017 was that second album they uh the latter went on to secure the best hip-hop artist at the western canadian music Awards, cemented them on 2018 top 10 list of the coveted Polaris music prize and landed them a 2019 Juno nomination for best indigenous music album. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. We really appreciate it, man. Um, want to ask both of you guys, first and foremost, hope you guys are keeping safe with, with everything going on COVID wise. Hope you guys are good. Um, how are you guys holding up? Um, yeah, just, We've been all right. Like, obviously, like, our tour got canceled. And just like everybody else, we've just been, like, just grinding, working on our music. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. trying to stay busy, you know? I feel like that's with everybody right now, man. Honestly. Just trying to find different things to, yeah. to keep you busy. Man. <laughs> Um, you know, I was I was first introduced to you guys to the song Skoden, which is a really, really dope song, really powerful song. Um, and again, I, I mean, I'm going to keep tooting your horn throughout this entire podcast. You guys are extremely talented. All right. Nice. Very, very talented people. Um, for the people who may not know listening at home, give them a bit of a background as to how you guys met and how you guys decided to start this music thing together. Yeah, man. Uh you know, with me and Tribes, like, we're actually, we're cousins, you know, we're related, and we grew up, born and raised in Kinemat Village, BC. It's, like, Northwest BC, and yeah, like, I've known Tribes for as long as I can remember, really. Uh, we grew up, you know, super close with me and him, and him and my brother, and me and his brother, you know, like, it was like a, just one big family, really, right. and Nice. Yeah, man, it's just we both fell in love with hip hop around the same time. We both started writing around the same time, and it was just kind of like a snowball effect from there. That's mm-hmm. awesome, man. That's awesome. Um, awesome. yeah, no, uh, go ahead, go ahead, Nick. No, for sure. I gotta jump in and ask them, man, for sure. Like, I know there's a stark contract between a few of the songs, like Indian Car, Fish and Rice, and even Bougie with a couple, uh, even Bougie Natives as well, too, and Skoden as well, too, that we talked about. You guys can go from the conscious rap to you know that's a bit of a conscious rap and i love the the spectrum of going back and forth where does that dynamic come from the ability to be able to go on that side and then go back on the other side of the spectrum uh, mm, like for us it's kind of like uh uh like when we talk about politics and stuff we're talking about like mostly like identity and like identity politics mm-hmm. and we're talking about like uh um, when we talk about like in Skoden, for example, we're talking about like land, defending the land and, and Bougie natives. And we're talking about being like rich in culture, traditions and like territory. Right. Um, but when you talk about like native people, you can't talk about land without uh, our, when you can't talk about our identity without talking about land. Right. So I feel like, uh, like we, we go in and out of um, just being like raised on our res and like kind of like res life, but also like, just us being like just in living in the city and at the same time um i i feel like uh on trap line we, we try to make a we try to take like the politics out of our music a bit but then we realize that we can't really do that it's, right can't really, like because it kind of goes hand in hand with for us interesting interesting and i think that that kind of bleeds through into your music as well because um, in a lot of ways, you guys are representative of the indigenous community and your community, right? You guys are are kind of the voice for them in a lot of ways. And, you know, speaking of this, this is kind of a responsibility and you have, you guys have that responsibility that this responsibility exists, whether it's, it's kind of something that you expect it to happen or not. How is it that you guys are trying to toe the line between, okay, we have to be representing and, and kind of representing for the culture, the community, and even the language, right? 
versus we're artists, we're musicians, we're trying to do this as well. We're actual, we, we can make good music as well, right? Yeah, for sure. Like, um, we're, we kind of, we're kind of held to another standard. Um, especially like when you, when you put on for like, a, like, a, like a group of people, mm-hmm. uh, and you put on for like the youth, like you, you're kind of like held to a certain standard of, um, like your artistry. Right. right. And, um, for us, we take that pretty seriously. Like, mm-hmm. like in our music, you, you, like we're pretty respectful in our music and we're, we're not like, we don't, uh, we're not like misogynistic in our music and we're, we're kind of like representing like a nation, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So, so we have to like, we have to like kind of like tread lately. I definitely respect that. And it definitely comes out in the music for the world to see, but I just want to get your guys' thoughts on some of the stuff that's been going on in the world and specifically in America throughout the past couple of months, you know, the uproar for like the black lives matter movement, you know, an important movement nonetheless an important cause. But then in Canada, as we know, we see there's a lot of conversation about police brutality here and how Canada deals with a lot of the same issues America does. But there's an entire group of people that says racism doesn't exist in Canada. What do you guys have to say about that? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little loaded question, I know, but... Uh... Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, you know, when the whole Black Lives Matter thing and that whole, like revolutionary time really kicked off like us as indigenous people like we understood Mm -hmm. you know what i mean because like when you think of the history of north america when it comes to canada day or yes independence day it celebrates like unity and the diversity from people all over the world living there and they celebrate all the lives that were built here in north america but for us, it's like, it's like a sour taste in our mouth because people don't either know or acknowledge the dark history that's here with indigenous people. You know what I mean? Like we got put through genocide. We got put through residential schools, assimilation. We deal with the systemic racism too. So like we may not know what it's like to, to be black and deal with the racism that comes towards, you know, the black community, but as the indigenous people, we get it. Right. You know what I mean? And like the systemic racism, the genocide, all that is far too similar, but what's even more similar between us is our resilience. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, it's just like, it's crazy to think that people are now paying attention to it just because it's getting recorded. Right. You know what I mean? And the like, power the power of that device now, right? Yeah, yeah, facts. And it's about damn time, you know what I mean? Like cuz this has been going on for fucking many, many, many years. Excuse my language, but no, it's, it's, all good, it's yeah. been going on for far too long and now it's finally starting to get noticed and people are still trying to act like racism doesn't exist just right. because it may not affect them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Tribes, I wanted to ask you, you know, um, I saw you guys in, I believe it was the Skoden video where you guys had um, fuck mascots on the back of the the jackets, right? And, you know, that's also a whole segment. I'm huge into sports, if you can't see from all the crazy stuff that's behind me. <laughs> but but um, that that's a huge segment of the conversation as well, because we have racist mascots out there throughout multiple different sports uh i'm not going to go ahead and raid name the names but you know the washington football club is one of the prime examples um they're in the process of changing their name i know a couple of other sports teams are considering it there's the cfl team in edmonton that's considering it as well do you think that that in itself is enough like uh you know the the changing of the name the moving that is that something that is we should give round of applause for or it's like okay this was expected yeah, I feel like I feel like it just it just like you know like we're watching the Redskins. It's just like it's not really paying homage to our people. It's not paying uh, any kind of respect to our people. It's actually like a racial slur, right? Obviously. Yeah. And um, yeah, the whole movement was uh, it was kill mascot, save the people, and that's like from our, our buddy out here who has a clothing line called Section Thirty Five, oh. and he does like a lot of like different kind of like um, gets behind like different political movements and stuff like that. Dope. And I, I feel like, I feel like, uh, like we all have like, a, like we all are a piece to like a big moving like engine. Right. 
And there's a lot of people like I know, um, um, Santiago ships up to X out of uh, Chicago. He's been doing a lot of work and like a lot of like uh, presentations for like removing mascots from that. Cause it's like, it, like to me, it's just like, it's just obvious like that you shouldn't be doing that. Right. Common sense. Right. Yeah. But yeah. And, and yeah, like, I feel like even with uh, the Cleveland Indians, uh, even though they like, they changed their, their, lo- their, their logo and all that, it's, yeah. it's still, it's still there. Right. And it's not really going to go away unless like people actually take it seriously because it's like part of culture now. Right. Right. Yeah. For sure. Um, me personally, I'm in Australia, but I'm back home now for Canada because of the whole COVID situation. But recently when I was in Australia for law school, I took a First Nations course at my university and I got the opportunity to learn more about how Indigenous artists navigate the music landscape out there. You guys yeah. recently toured in Australia and I just want to know how was your experience connecting with like, you know, the Indigenous rising in Australia, being a part of the growing uh, movement? Yeah, it was... It was like we were both just amazed at just how similar they get treated down there as to we get treated up here. You know, like when we went there, we met some artists out there, some indigenous artists out there. They're from Bad Apples. And we just connected like instantly. And we just realized just like how similar we were to each other, even though we're from different parts of the world. Yeah. It's like super similar, you know, we Mm -hmm. just bonded instantly and, you know, we hung out with a lot of locals with them and they took us a tour around like Sydney and stuff and just told us some of like the history there. And we were just like, damn. Yeah. Like it's, it's all too familiar, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could imagine um, it was, it was a bit of a, a rude awakening to, to be going to a completely different country and see, wow, this, this, this also happens here as well. Right. Um let, let's let's talk about the the music side of this this as well. You guys have an incredible trap influence on your music. The, the, listen, man, the sound goes hard, bro. So hard. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, so hard. <laughs> it goes hard. There's there's no denying that. It it's just great music, and um and on top of that, it's just it's it, it works right. Where does that particular sound come from, you guys? Where where's the element of we're trying to have this trap sound, and and where do you guys even and kind of create that influence? Whichever one of you guys wants to go, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Darren wants to answer it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, like, so, like, over the years and, like, how hip-hop has evolved, right, from, like, the boom bap in the 90s and then evolution into the 2000s and then last decade. And, uh, you know, we're just big fans of that sound. And, you know, Trap's kind of the idea to, I mean, it's like, you know, when you think of, like, trapping and, like, trap music, that's for, like, typically like the trap house right like right but for right. us yeah. for us when it comes to trapping it's like we're hunting mm. you know what i mean so like we kind of did like a sort of like like kind of like a play on words almost like this is our version of trap music interesting okay you know what i mean and it's right. just like us showcasing our roots showcasing our identity and our pride our resilience all that wow okay but, but, but we also like yeah we also take a lot of influence from like like a like an Atlanta sound right yeah so yeah. and and the producer that we work with out of out of uh he's from Atlanta actually and his name's Cato and he's he's like the he's kind of like the mastermind behind a lot of the sound of our beats and stuff like that that's dope but, I'm lo- I'm looking forward to this next project then man yes yeah I know me too it's like it's coming together too okay I feel that man um you guys dropped a lot of stuff this year. Uh, but born deadly and creator made an animal please if you don't mind just go into like give our listeners like what happened like what's the studio sessions like what is the creative process for making these type of great tracks um for us like we we were doing a lot of the the work out of toronto uh we were working with uh, a guy named kr at sandbox studios and like when we first when we first met him like we just like instantly connected and uh he kind of acts like like me, me and Darren walk in there and like we connected and he kind of like just kind of pushes us to another level. Wow. And especially when it comes to like our recording and like working on our cadence and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But usually like, like we'll go into the studio and I'll, like if you listen to Born Deadly, um, 
the, the sing, one of the singles peaks and valleys. Uh, we didn't like when we lost Players Music Surprise. Um, we we went into the studio right right away next morning. Wow! And and this was a beat that Darren actually made, and we just wrote it from scratch, like right there on the spot. So if you go listen to that, um, like that was made on the spot. And a lot of the, a lot of the stuff that we do is like like especially now we'll go into the studio and like we'll just like uh, come up with a beat and then freestyle into the mic and like record like that. Nice. So, that, yeah, we started recording like that within this last year. It's uh, that's yeah. that, that, that's very close to me and and Nate's Nate's heart. We used we used to do that all the time. Well, shout out to us, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Darren. I'll I'll ask you this. It kind of relates to what Trabs was saying. Um, you know, how do you guys get into the creative process? I mean, Trabs just mentioned the the situation of you guys losing in Polaris and then going straight into the studio. Um, I think it's so important to have a producer that you vibe with and, and connect with on, on a on a musical level, and you guys have clearly found that. Uh, what what do you guys use as inspiration? What do you guys use as, to get into that creative process? Honestly, like a lot of our inspiration comes from like our family mm-hmm. and like the people that we've been like surrounding ourselves with, you know, and, like when I first moved to Vancouver, not first. Yeah. When I first moved to Vancouver, mm-hmm. uh, Travis was already living here and, you know, he met just a bunch of like, indigenous academics like land protector you know what i mean and like, like artists whether it's like musical or like with paintings or carvings right. like we just met like a lot of people like that and like the community was just amazing we're just like damn like, this is wild and we really drew a lot from that right. and you know when it comes to that finding like our pride and our identity i know for me personally it took us leaving home to realize what we had back home because you know like in kinemat it's it's like an ocean inlet so like water everywhere there's mountains everywhere there's no city lights no skyscraper buildings right it's just peaceful right and then you come to the city it's like a concrete jungle you know like (laughs) so that's when we started to reflect and that's when like the change started happening for both of us when it came to our writing right and you know, especially if like that first album, uh, we sat down together a lot. You know, we would scroll through like SoundClick or BeatStars for like hours just to find <laughs> just a good couple beats, you know? And like, you can only do that for so long before you just get tired. Just, but, yeah. But like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, it's, yeah, man, like we would just grind it up together. You know what I mean? And right. once, um, there's like a while for like maybe like year and a half maybe i was like back and forth from vancouver to kitimat mm-hmm. or abs would be same thing back and forth from the north to the city okay. and we just started looking for beats on our own and if one of us came up with an idea we'd write a verse and then send it and then we just vibe off each other from there nice it's important, man, especially as a duo for you guys to be able to bounce ideas back and forth, man. How, how do you guys, how do you guys work on that? And like, I'm, I mean, you know, how, how's the dynamic working and now you're getting to a level where the pressure is on you, right. Mm-hmm. To, to keep producing. How do you guys balance yeah. that? <clears throat> like, I mean, uh, for the last like eight months, I lived out in Toronto. So yeah. I was, I was there like kind of the right when like, like COVID started and or started to like shut everything down that's a bad time it's a bad time exactly i moved out there to like network and just kind of like like advance our career but uh but me me and darren be working and be like sending things back and forth and say like we had a deadline coming up and we had a song like that had to come out soon and that's what like born deadly was we weren't even in the same studio half the time like we i'd send him a demo then he'd send me a demo back and then like it, it, it was really hard to do that Right. Because, because like, it took a lot of time, you know. Um, if say like the turnaround, it'd be like one day, two days, whatever it was. Uh, that kind of sucks. So like, I moved back to Vancouver just to just to be in the same place as Darren. Because like, when when we made the first two albums, or actually the first three albums, um, like we literally would like he would like wherever I was living, he'd come and stay with me for like two weeks at a time. And we just like grind out a bunch of demos and a bunch of recordings and and get as much done as we could while he just like, really, like 
he pretty much like stayed in my house. And I, f- I feel like for this next album, it has to be more like that. And that's why I moved back to Vancouver. Got you. I respect that. Okay. Right. Before we move on, I gotta ask you, Darren. I see a lot of like chords behind you and all of that. What instruments have been being played recently? I think he's again. I see a lot of chords right behind you in your background, so I have to oh. ask like, as a musician, like, what have you been playing recently? <laughs> uh, it's not so much mine; it's more my partner's. She, no, it's not. It's okay. Uh, no. like, she plays guitar, ukulele. She sings. Okay. Some, play some keys too. And since being like locked up in COVID, I kind of. <laughs> I actually started playing the keys last week. Mm. Okay. Dope. Like I, I tried to I tried to pick up the guitar, but it was just like so foreign to me. I couldn't get used to it. For sure. But once I started playing the piano, it was kind of more natural. Right. And okay. plus, like I've been like producing too, right? So I figured it would help me with my production as well. Oh yeah. Oh, Absolutely. Definitely. Absolutely. Um, but I want to ask you guys, like growing up, what were you guys like your musical influences? What influenced you guys to like get into the music game, create the art you guys have? Yeah, I mean, for me, it was like I saw uh, the movie Eight Mile when I was, I was super young. <laughs> like, just the way, like, that was probably like my first introduction to hip hop, actually. It was like rap, like battle rap. Wow. And like, mm-hmm. you know, kids used to like pick on us and shit. And just the way that he was able to humiliate his opponent, like with his mind and his wit. I was like, damn, I want to do that. <laughs> so, yeah, that's where, that's where it kind of started for me. And, you know, both me and Tribes, we were like the youngins, cause like we grew up playing basketball together, right? Oh, and it was like wow. Uh, that yeah, yeah w- we've got way too much in common. This is our weird, basketball man. analysts over here is much more yeah. weird. <laughs> weird <laughs> but yeah, so like, so man. we were playing on a seventeen and under team, and we were on there. You know, I started playing in that when I was like twelve, so I was like the youngin hanging out with a bunch of. 16 17 year olds right right and like a lot of them listen oh you must have been balling balling (laughs) (laughs) and uh yeah man i like a lot of uh the older manets that we played ball with they just bumped like the classic 90s shit you know what i mean and like the tupacs the biggies and then in the 2000s the eminem the dr dre the snoop dog you know so like we grew up in that but as we started to get older and like when we hit high school, that's when like our love for Southern hip hop started to come into play. Right. You know, when like T.I. fucking came on the scene and Wayne, Outkast, right, and, yeah. yeah, Lil Wayne and like Texas with like Paul Wall and all them guys, man. Like, right. I don't know. It was just something like just the way the beats hit, the way their fucking voices sounded, like their swagger. You know what I mean? We were just like... Right. It was fucking dope. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, even to this day, like Tribe said, like we were very influenced by the Atlanta sound. And like some of our favorite artists, actually, they're actually from Atlanta. Man, Atlanta is, as a city, in, like they're genuinely dominating the hip hop market now, like in terms of what it is. It, yeah, it, sure. it's, it's incredible. Um, I, I guess Are I'll you, ask. Oh, go ahead, Tribes. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to say too, like, um, uh, obviously, like we have a lot of influence through like like older hip hop, uh, but like you know, like as 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 we like get older, like we ha- we started listening to like new music, like uh, like like you know, like the new sounds that are coming out. So even down to like, have you guys looked at Earth Gang? Yeah, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so Earth Gang's like probably our favorite artist, and like that'd be like our dream collab, you know? Wow. And, uh, well, I guess I, I, that for sure. I guess one of our uh, quick hitter questions is gone then, because we were going to ask you what your dream collab is. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, definitely be Earth Gang. Okay. But you know, like, but like growing up too, like our uncles, they they were all like metalheads, you know. So like, we grew up grew up like listening to like at least like the classic the classic uh, metal, like Iron Maiden and obviously yeah, um, Saber, all that kind of music, you know. Like, mm-hmm. That was like a huge influence on us. And that's how we like you could tell when we do our shows that like we've been to like metal shows and stuff like that, you know? Right. Take some influence from that. I, I think it comes out in your performances as well. And in your music videos, you guys you like the the animated ideas that you guys have, it, it kind of translates into what your influences were from the past. So <laughs> I, I can I can see that. Um well, I'll ask you guys straight up. What's up? What's next? What What are we What are we seeing in terms of releases? Yeah, Is there an album coming? <laughs> let us know. Yeah, let us know. 
we got we got an album coming out. Uh, it still doesn't have a name attached to it because uh, the album that we were gonna come out with was supposed to call it was gonna be called Red Future, and it was like a post 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 apocalyptic feel, and kind of like what we're going through right now, pretty much, you know. But like, and it feels like the world's gonna end, and um, uh, so like the, the theme of the the theme of the album would have been like like indigenous people would like be like main survivors because we know how to navigate our territories. True. Mm-hmm. Right. right. And, but, but, but as of late, me and Darren kind of like, just like kind of just put that on the back burner and yeah. we came up with a new concept album that is supposed to set, set to release March 5th. But, okay. but we got a single coming out um, in 10 days from now. Nice. Uh, new collaboration with Jesus. It's called Where Are They At? Okay. okay. All right. All right. We're pretty excited for that one too. And we're, I can already we're, imagine it's going hard, bro. I yeah, can, yeah, yeah. The song, okay. song, song goes hard, but we also have like a few other like collaborations with um, uh, Desi Subculture and I don't know who else we used to collab with. We have probably have a few more, but those are the those are the, those are the next two that are coming out. Okay, so and you said it's coming out next week. Uh, yeah, on the twenty third. Twenty third. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we'll yeah, make man, sure our listeners I, definitely know. And yeah, like as far as like uh, this new project that we're working on too, mm-hmm. and like you know, like it's really inspired by like this whole COVID experience because it like it just hit everybody right, and yeah. like sooner or later, whether it was like at the beginning, in the middle, or even now, it was like there's a lot of like mental fatigue from mm-hmm. it. You know what I mean? And like really and i know for me me personally like focusing heavily on my mental health and to really try let go of whatever baggage i have from the past and really heal and grow and so like this next album is just going to be super personal that's important man it's you know important, I mean? and like yeah. and, I, and it, of course we're going to have the snrk touch you know what i mean okay, okay. <laughs> like, like some trap line-esque but it's also going to be like a lot of growth in this record no but that's awesome that's awesome a mixture of both Awesome. Do you guys mind doing some quick hitters before we go today? Just a few questions. Quick hitters. Yeah. Awesome. We so, got the we got the first one out the way. We got the first one out the way, the way right? But yeah. I just want to know outside of the music, the production, everything that you guys are working on, on your spare time, what do you guys do? If you have it. I mean, it's it's just music for me. Like it's I mean, <laughs> it's like when I when I, when we're not doing music, we're doing music, you know. Okay. Nice. Whether it's like learning or like, especially for me, when it comes to the production, I'm always learning. I'm watching tutorials. I'm watching producers on Twitch. Uh, I got like paid subscriptions for like courses and stuff. And like I said, I've been learning the piano. Like it's always, it always revolves around music. Wow. I used used to game out a lot, but (laughs) not so much anymore. But uh, yeah, I try to, sorry, I, I try to work out and just play basketball on my spare time. Yo, where are you guys hooping, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, well, when I was in Toronto, we we were playing. Uh, we were playing like like just street ball wherever yeah. we could. Yeah. yeah. And out here, like we were at the gym out here. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, it's it's tough now because of COVID and everything. Like, um, yeah. There's no pickup in the city no more. Nothing. There's nothing. Uh, my, yeah. There's there's a gym we have near near a place where um, you have to rent just one rim. You can rent one rim and you can only have two people on the rim. Yeah. Like, so you can't even one? have, you can't even have runs, <laughs> nothing. Yeah. Damn, man. yeah. It's wild, man. So I, I can, I can understand you, what you guys are saying, man. It's needed. I, I need to get some ball runs in too. but um, yeah. other, other than that, this is kind of our staple question. It's we're called the no good podcast. So I got to ask you guys and you guys can both answer this any way you guys want. What's something that is good to others but is no good to you. So what is something everybody else raves about, talks about, loves, but you hate or dislike? Uh, <laughs> a lot of, uh, a lot of homies back home, like, like they like, they love like Nickelback. <laughs> oh, Nickelback. Come on. <laughs> Oh man, the, the Nickelback slander arrived on the No Good Podcast, man. <laughs> uh, 
I didn't want to do it, but I, that's all I did. I got you. <laughs> I got you. I got you. All right. Nickelback it is. All right. D, let me know. Let me, let me know if you got anything. I don't know. You kind of you kind of hit you kind of hit it with the hammer on that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, wow. man. They're, they're Canadian, too, isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, nah. yeah. I'm yeah. a little loud, though. You're a little loud. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Oh, man. We really do appreciate you guys taking time out of your very busy schedule to come sit down here with us at the No Good Podcast. Uh, but just before we go, let us know, let our listeners know where we can find you guys, your socials, and what's happening next. Yeah, Snotty Nose Reds Kids, at Snotty Nose Reds Kids on pretty much anything, like Instagram, Facebook, uh, on Twitter, it's at the Reds Kids, uh, Spotify and all that. It's right. Red Kids. And um, yeah, we're just going to, you know, keep grinding out, have a few music videos coming out in the next little while. Nice. Um, like I said, album coming out March 5th. And hopefully by then we can tour. Hopefully. Right. Hopefully. Yeah, we're just cross. We're just cross. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All bad. Well, we do really appreciate it, guys. You heard it first. Not in those Red Kids. Until next time, it's the Borson No Good Podcast. We'll see you guys soon. Mm. Peace. Yep. Thank you guys, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming out.